Welcome, one and all, to Code Weaver Plays Games. Now, it looks like my audio is already set up, and we're going to be playing a little bit of the Stanley Parable Deluxe Edition. So let's just switch right on over, and hopefully this will just show up. Yes. All right, showing up on my screen. Is it showing up in OBS? It is. All right. So I'm gonna, I'll test the audio once again once I'm in the game, just to make sure everything's working well. Why am I doing this? Because I played the original and I absolutely adored it and it was my favorite, so I'm not going into this completely blind, but there is supposed to be quite a bit of additional content in here, and so that's what I'll be searching for and I'll just be enjoying the playthrough anyway. Um, this is one of those games where I would be thoroughly happy to enjoy on my own, but I decided to share it because I haven't done streaming in a while and I wanted to drag all of you into my madness with me. Anyway, hitting okay. Yes, I have, in fact, played the Stanley Parable before. Please adjust the slider until the computer is barely visible. Standard gamma test. I'll just leave it there. That's fine. It looks okay on stream. Please enter the current time. All right, let's, let's do this properly. So it's, oh my god, it's 5.30 p.m. already. All right. Uh, let's uh, try to do that. So we're going to confirm. Accessibility settings can be set from the main menu. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I do have some audio in this, so I'm quickly going to switch over to my other headset. Yeah, okay. Looks like our audio levels are good. I have to do that every single stream because I don't know how not to and annoy all of you with my fiddling around with my settings, but there we go. So let's check out the settings, see if there's anything in here to know about. Probably not. Uh, all of this is fine. This is fine. VSync is fine. Anti-aliasing, great. Everything's great. Uh, anything unusual in the controls? No, that's fine. All right. Shall we? Let's find out what Stanley's up to. I like the background uh, office chatter. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Hi, Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Sounds a lot like my job. came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, Sit down how to office. push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Was he though? And then was one he... day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. So, um... <laughs> Like a lot of other games where exploration and lore are key to this, I'm going to say, if you ever at any point in this playthrough have any intention of playing as yourself, go and do it yourself. Don't get spoiled by my playthrough. Um, love having whoever shows up show up, uh, especially if you've already seen the Stanley Parable before. Uh, but um, this is going to be exploration. I am going to be listening to a very large amount of the dialogue, but I'm also going to make occasional commentary so if you get annoyed by me accidentally talking over the narrator well then why are you watching a stream go and play it yourself anyway here we go let's check around 
doesn't see if there's anything I can abjectly click on. I don't recall that being a big thing in Stanley Parable. This is mostly about the experience. Also, I don't have any water that I said I was going to get after I finished the climb. By the way, go and see that video. It was a lot of fun. So I'm going to be able to get in there. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Can't actually jump in this either, strictly speaking. Um, okay. Now I do know some of the secrets of this game and I'll intersperse them a little bit um, with uh, my general playthrough because I want to experience everything over again anyway. Oh, it's so much fun being back in this ridiculous universe. And I'm super keen to, like, look at all the nooks and crannies just to see if there's anything I've forgotten. Or that's new. I hate Mondays, yeah. How that feels. That feels very me right now. very tempting to try to figure out if there's anything actually going on over uh, on the whiteboards. Can't quite make that out well enough. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. You know what? I, I'm not feeling like uh, being contrarian just yet. Go back. It'd be interesting to engage like a little bit of no clip or whatever to pass through the walls and like see what's in here. Because I wouldn't be surprised if the devs actually put some things on some of these sheets of paper, these screens that are nigh impossible to figure out otherwise. Huh. Unnamed doors. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Boy, this is just a little too real. <laughs> Cabal planning, group planning. Somebody decided not to have a little bit of fun. Ugh. <laughs> hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper synergizing guy. Who moved my desk? Please keep the targets on the topic of and squished out. Rubbed out. Um, complete today's unfinished agenda items. Right next to these agenda, reflect. The future is yesterday, tomorrow is now. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Hmm. Standalone grass, 40 times wide. Not efficient for money. Yeah, this is... Uh, I do not like bureaucracy, which is an irony um, me playing this game. Just a little real. Just a little real. Uh, and it's funny, actually. I'm reading these in more detail now that I'm doing it on, a, on stream. Um, size of demographic space between the teenagers? Teenagers. Uh, by quarterly post review review. Of course. We need less reviews. <laughs> well, yes. 402 and 405 want to get rid of the death sport portion in the primary review schedule, but I think that's a stupid idea. More water coolers, more water cooler heaters. Chart needs to be more hip to appeal to the teenage demographic. Why? Find teenagers to put in the teenage demographic. Big net, some sort of child trap. All right. Um, no more bins, trash cans. Renaming of the ideas bin. Um, firing of firing of me. Okay. Throw something in the ideas bin. All right. What do people want? Things. Rate of increase in grass per slide. 
Please, no more charts. I'm begging. Stop, stop. Somebody, this, this feels, I know, I remember there being a projector in the previous game, but I don't know if I ever stopped to look at them that closely. What, what a pity. Uh... Find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee like yourself, but more inclined towards conflict. Unless you're the kind of person who initiates conflict, and I couldn't remember the rest or read the rest of that. What are your dreams for the future? Yeah, comatose. Yeah. Tips for not getting fired. Talk less. Do unbelievably amazing work all time, all the time, every day, with no expectation of promotion or recognition. Don't get fired. How to solve a dispute with a code worker. Let it ball up inside you. Take it out passively aggressively on other co-workers. Resent co-workers for not supporting you more. Eh. Anyway. Um, things, money, more money. Things, but with money to buy more things. Graphs. Graphs about things and money. We have our new product. Our product is going to be graphs about things and money. Stock market is somewhat he somewhere here. Colored in segment, stripes, requires more secondary research. Stripes definitely require more secondary research. What is hot? Profits, 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 profits. All right. Anything to add over here? To do synergize core value expenditure, shift global market parade, uh, or paradigm, probably paradigm. Uh, monetize free to play. Yeah, quarterly pie chart schedules. On your boss appreciation minute worksheet, circle the top 20 things you love most about your boss. Fill out a triplicate and return to, return to your boss appreciation specialist. I, I can't read any more of that or I will literally go mad. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. It's a very nice broom closet. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Well, except that there's some very nice duct tape over here. I'm quite fond of that. And I might have use for it a... It was uh... baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is... He's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Yes, but let's be clear. The reason there's nothing to interact with in the broom closet is because are you, the developer... Are you really still in the broom closet? Standing yes. around doing nothing? Yes. Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Because I want to interact with the duct tape. Or the wrench. Or, I'm not entirely you sure... You realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me, because literally, this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Well, yeah, but, I mean, let's face it, that is a really, really nice, you know, roll of twine. This is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom yes. closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Actually, my friends would probably find it concerning, yes. But they might also pick Stanley up a roll of duct tape. and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Mm, okay, that's possibly well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Maybe I'm just in here waiting. Situation like this. The responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Now Hello? look Anyone who happens to be nearby, the person at this computer is dead. You're mocking me, aren't you? Pray to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area 
and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. You know, I mean, clearly now I kind of feel like I have to wait around for the, what was it, drugs and hookers? I mean, frankly, it would be better than the boardroom. Oh, fine. Very well. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. Hi, fool, you. You too. Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Are you sure? Fine. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. All right, all right. I'll, I'll walk upstairs to the boss's office. I'm not going to be contrarian. Um, interesting. There's an executive bathroom, though. Because the boss knows what the boss says goes, or the boss suffered losses, that's where the boss, that's what the boss shows. Alright. Extreme bathrooms, excellent. And Time Magazine with a time, with a clock on the cover. Can't quite make that out. Data on... Data Guide testifies on the trial of the century. Is that what that says? I can't quite read it. Jeez, I need glasses. My eyes are going. And unfortunately, oh, I can crouch. Can I crouch enough to... I wonder if I can... jank my way up onto the toilet seat here to be able to get a view on that cover. No, it's really hard to... You're not really meant to, you know, parkour your way around. All right. All right, let's, let's go take a look. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 284. Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Okay. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Yeah, I couldn't possibly know that. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I feel kind of stuck. Two, eight, four, five. Yeah, that's astonishing, but there's no way that I could possibly know that. So, you know how it goes. I kind of want to solve this on my own. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in. And the door just opened all by itself. And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, what did do? <laughs> really? Ever get the feeling that maybe life occasionally has you on an un unwavering, unswerving track?
Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. That being said, can we go back up? Whoops. Nope. Uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. <laughs> I'm a little surprised it let me do that. I don't recall being able to do that in the previous version of the game. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other. Weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. All right. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? I don't know. I just feel like it needs to be done. Surely this time Stanley will walk forward into the spooky corridor, won't he? You'd like to think that, but... Did you think we were going to go forward down the spooky corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. Oh my god. <laughs> it's the boss's office. Uh, this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. What in the... <laughs> uh... Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait! No! I need more time to process. Oh, bravo. So I'm wasting the narrator's time. The narrator is feeling free to waste my time. Golf clap. I, I mean, I suppose that's only fair. All right. I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. You sure? Are you absolutely certain? Very well. Of course. Going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive.
you do know I have to do this one more time, don't you? That was quick. Hmm. You know what? I just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no <laughs> way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense, the agony of waiting and anticipation and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I certainly don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? There we go. Isn't this so much more Oh, you are a colossal ass. It seems ass. like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? Why I... aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? Maybe in this to elevator. To and to anticipate, and then to marvel at the eventual reveal. For the this rest of the session. storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. And it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I'm... I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged. I'm not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time, and we all know it. Which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a role model, you know. People look up to you. Which is why, oh, I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you. So that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Well, I really yes, appreciate that. I know that. you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. That's fair. I don't fair. know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact Wait. on them for Wait, the Wait, hold better. the phone. Oh, good, we're here. Uh, okay, I, um, I actually did not anticipate this. And I can't go back down, so the narrator has decided that he's had enough of me. And I, I really can't blame him for that. Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. Uh... This is the best thing ever. Um, yeah, you, you can't outsnark the narrator. You just can't. Uh, world's healthiest human being. All tricks revealed. How we did it. The pyramids. Live. The guy went to Mars. Live on stage. All eyes on Stanley. Okay. An evening of the world peace, baby. Ah, yes. Here it is, just through this door. Uh, world's first sentient machine, a Q&A. Uh, the storyteller. Uh, okay, Stanley tonight live on stage. The man, the process, the myth, the legend, the parable. Uh, Stanley parable, Stanley tonight live on stage. Okay. Doing great, a conversation with Alexander the Great. Interesting, okay, two stage. All right. Are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry. You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay, it looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. I'm not ready. I'm scared. Uh, Stanley Ryder, almonds, cherry gum, table number. All right. Uh... Four two seven. All right, what do we have here? Congratulations, Stanley. Remember where you came from, your co-workers. Okay. 
Break a leg, champ. Your boss. I'm never going to be able to read all of that. Uh, thanks for showing us that cool skateboard trick in the parking lot. You're too cool. Good luck on stage. Rock on. Stanley, me, David, age six. I love the way you ride elevators, though. That's hilarious. No one tells stories the way you do. Go get them, Tiger. Uh, Stanley, my true love for you grows every day. You make me feel alive, your wife. From the apartment ending. Which I have not yet done in this playthrough, but I know what they're referring to, and I can't wait to find out if they went and mangled that. Uh, the dude who came up with pizza, an audience with the dude who came up with pizza, all right? So we're going up. Sigh. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Shall we play it straight this time? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. Ah. That kind of anxiety <laughs> isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Yeah, I, I kind of deserve that. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. All right, we'll play it straight. Down we go. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. No, no, I'm playing it straight. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now, while you can't jump up, you can occasionally cheese yourself onto ledges. And this is actually... 
allowed to be done and intended to be allowed, uh, tended to be done in a very small number of circumstances. Like, I have to figure out what this does. Aha! You've made it to the bottom of the mind control facility. Welcome! You see, back when the Stanley Parable first launched in 2013, getting to the bottom of the mind control facility was a bug that we simply didn't catch during development. And you all sent us lots of photos of it on Twitter and acted very superior about it. And you're all very, very clever. Good for you. Anyway, when it came time to update the game, we knew that we had to do something about this little goof of ours. So, here you go. New content. You can call it the bottom of the mind control room ending, if that enhances your perception of the value of these updates. It does Isn't a little bit. To crave new yeah. content. Always yeah. more content, more content, more, 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 more. And I'm here to give it to you. I'm here to You're make it sweet. seem like we really covered every nook and cranny of the game with secrets and Easter eggs. Oh no, we're going to find lots more bugs. This. We wrote a new piece of music just for this section. You won't hear it anywhere else in the game. It's a secret that's just for you. That's how special you are. I'm pretty we special. We call this track, Good Job You've Made It to the Bottom of the Mind Control Facility. Well done. Good job, you did it. Good job. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Good job, you made it to the bottom of the mind control facility. I am gonna have this cut out, so I'm not gonna speak a whole lot while we're down here in case YouTube decides to get pissy for something that. Bug, but now it's an ending, now it's an ending. I believe in you, I believe in your ability to cross this barrier and chase your dreams. The railings don't mean anything. Good job, you did it. 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 Now, I never actually encountered that in the original game, and I'm slightly ashamed All of myself. All co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. In fact, I'm going to demonstrate the ending that I do know about where that kind of cheesing is actually something that he actually put in. Uh, no if it still how works. Stanley looked, yeah, he couldn't here we find go. A trace of his co-workers. Let's try it out. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? No, okay, I. I'm over it now. What yeah, do you think? Yeah, you so see this gag yet? No, not really. Ah, then in that case, we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Would it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? Clearly, this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is which, hours, days. Just played the other option. And I might miss work to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, literally you are one of the lucky ones. Though if the no other way option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. To outsmart ass the narrator. I'm just going just to say that possible. no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well now, 
I've built up the other options so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. Yeah, and, and now I'm I'm literally stuck forever and ever and ever because you can't outsmart ass the narrator. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Of course, what this means is I have to go in here again just to piss him off. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Yes, Why yes, don't it is. we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Yes. Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit escape and restart the game any old time you want. I right could, but... Right now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. I Ooh, could. Those points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. Because so I don't have them. just to push the envelope... I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. It's not actually that miserable. There once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. It's he true. did it all day in a meaningful way. But his brain had long ceased to function. Limericks to music, that's kind of new. Which is why he is in this parable. And lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yeah. You too will become quite unbearable. See, how am I supposed to leave when there's so much charming? Narration and singing and music. All right. So one of the downsides to this is I am absolutely positive they will probably have coded something in here where if I stuck this out for the next 12 hours, something would happen. I know this because they did this in another gag somewhere else in the game, which I will probably never be able to do. Um, and so if I find that there is more to this gag at some point, perhaps I will revisit it. But if I don't begin the game again and explore more stuff, I will be missing out. And you don't want to have me hanging out that Stanley long. had never seen the office so. this brightly lit. Was it a sign of something? He hoped it was. He hoped very much that it was. Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open Once doors, again, he entered the door on his left. I'm going to try to play this one straight. It's so hard because every no single person here either. Every single branch promises goofiness. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I okay, even know where some of the drill by now. Blah blah blah. Dark secrets. The keypad. Stanley pushes. <laughs> oh, hey, look! It's a new passageway. No surprise. Uh, I love everything about this game. This is nothing more than distilled cheek. 
Uh, makes me so happy. All right, let's let's do this Sam one actually. Walks straight ahead through the large door that read Mind <laughs> Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Well, I'm not going to throw myself to the bottom of the pit this time. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Right, up we go. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? Yes. That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Corporate America. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Yes. Yes, he has. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. My control is idle, awaiting input. rising chill of uncertainty was it over yes he had won he had defeated the machine unshackled himself from someone else's command freedom was mere moments away and yet even as the immense door slowly opened Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Perfectly lovely, very simple basic ending.
Achievement unlocked. Beat the game. Hello. This is a recorded message scheduled either by you or person in your place of work. The purpose of this message is to warn you about the dangers of recorded messages. If at any time you believe you are listening to a recorded message, please terminate it immediately and cease all flow of information from the recorded message into your perceptual sphere. Thank you, and have a pleasant day. I'm reasonably sure that that wasn't in the original game either. But I could be wrong. Now I kind of feel like I want to turn off all the monitors. Okay, I got a character of input input. Uh, don't know what that means. Curious. Well, okay, I can't turn that down. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? Okay. Okay, uh, I'm scared. I, I'm, I'm already scared. Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. I'm scared. Please step inside and see Nothing what good can thrilling come of this. Await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. I'm detecting enormous amounts of sass. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them. Um... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. I agree. Okay. All right. Um, All right, let's yeah. see it's the jump circle. Is... is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Oh, Lasai. This is gonna go right back up to like a million chunks remaining. Granted, we have been unable to jump in this game before, so that was kind of exciting. Not gonna lie. Goodness. 
Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This yeah, is what this happens right. when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. Good, <sighs> do it. It's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived well. up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. I agree. What do you say, friend? Narrator, you're precious. Oh, wait a minute. Something's not right here. Um. Okay. Who rules? Which is weird in a Stanley Parable game, but... Come over here, in the vent. I want to show you something. Okay. No, I'm gonna be a jerk. Oh, you don't want to see the cool surprise I made for you? Well, fine, you're a dork anyways. Oh. Never mind, you're not a dork. Okay. What are you doing? Okay, uh, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. This is actually kind of cool. Well done, narrator. Oh, I wow. call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. Uh oh. Oh, no. Oh, for a moment there, I thought that was a genuine weird bug of some sort. Um, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean much in a game where the narrator is literally playing around with the game. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013 when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. These were indeed good times. Linguists identify 15,000 year old ultra conservative or ultra conserved words, the Washington Post. Um. 
Safe Components of Great Corporate Culture, John Coleman, Harvard Business Review. All right. Unachievable. It is impossible to get his achievement. That's hilarious. Go outside. Don't play for five years. Game innovation. This is a great new video game releasing today. Fairly parable deals tough choices. This is weirdly charming. And this is going to... Loving memory, little Sally. All right, let's... Um... And in the theater is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote... Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim, it was Persona 3, it was all of them, and now it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A no, no, it isn't, narrator. With an it's hour beautiful. of new elevator content. To be clear, it was, though, a very solid elevator. This is kind of hilarious, and a lot of it is really only going to make sense if you played the original Stanley Parable, which I managed to not get to because I got distracted by shiny new content. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, the twin doors. So many of life's choices uh, got made. People play games because of what they can do inside them, and your game is very good at letting them know that they can't do anything. Ha! <laughs> Well, um, I kind of did this uh, playthrough backwards. That's moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games, and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone, to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. I mean, you're not wrong, but... Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Oh no. Oh god no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. 
I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. I fully agree. You have nothing to defend yourself for. You are just fine the way you are. What total twaddle. You just can't peek into the corners because you can't jump, and it's really hard to cheese yourself up to on top of anything. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Nope, you're a sarcastic jackass, and I love it. shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure, like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. Very interested to see if I can cheese my way into some of the more obscure areas of the game, but... I suspect I'm going to miss a critical one in the attempts to get some obvious ones. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then... Then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people, and if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue, and it goes something like this. The story, and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time, everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 see, blah, 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 there's blah, a critical blah, flaw in this, blah, blah, blah. We've again. Eaten too much, and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction, therefore, becomes impossible to manufacture. It went on for nearly 10,000 years. The we Critical just failing is again there forward and back and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's that I'm perfectly happy to let him ramble. Is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say the story and the choices, or what have you, and therefore by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably we all Fortunately, until the end of time. At he's which now repeating himself. Once, now, so, again, I wouldn't put it past the game developers to put something special. Too much and it can't be just yet. No, no, until 245. 
got the logic of elimination working backwards. Put something in here in case I did last forever on this. It went but on for I'll have to look that up if anybody's crazy enough. Until just yet. Oh, you're back, you see. You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly and you can tell me what you think. Okay, so my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are or were or will be at the time of having made said choice. That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your great gift of mortal and yet timeless thought? Or rather, do all of the nope, choices not pressing you've ever the made, in fact, make you more not this kind of person, and in fact, do the very opposite? You see, it could in fact be both of these things at once. That you are both making choices and not making choices. And that they are both affecting you and not affecting you at the same time by virtue of the fact that you both are and are not making them. Okay, at first, I was leaning towards manifesto. But now I'm going to circle around and slap the treatise label on this one. I think it has much more of a treatise vibe to it. But wouldn't you I say agree. that Manifesto just has a much grander sort of tone? It has a mouthfeel that is rich with ambition and history. Ambitious history, if you will. Ah. See, now you've got me going back to Manifesto. Heavens, at this rate, we're going to be here all day. Okay, yes, we are. I have a method for exactly this sort of situation. And I do find myself in this situation frequently. I'm going to say each word back and forth in repeated succession until I become sick of one or the other, in which case the word I am not sick of shall be the victor. It is an unimpeachable strategy, Stanley. It's rescued me from disaster I agree. in you should do situations. This. All right, here we go. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Uh, Treatise, sigh. manifesto. <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Although I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, surely whoever it is runs Steam will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one's review, merely because of this very situation. Yes, I think that's quite likely. Or perhaps they'll simply grant this particular user the ability to change their review so that the feature is not widely abused. Look, I would even be okay with Steam altering this particular review so that it reads as something more beneficial. Something along the lines of, this game is the best game. Hmm, let me start over. How about this? From the, from the ashes of depravity rises the phoenix of quality. How else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Such a revolutionary step forward in the lineage of one of the most beloved video game properties of all time. The additions and changes made to this expansion will surely resonate in the annals of the history of all media ever made. It is perhaps true to say that no mistakes are forever etched in stone, for the stone into which the Stanley Parable was carved has itself been transmuted. Offering a message of hope to those who have ever erred in their judgment. You are not beyond redemption. You may change. And you may become more, so much more than you were before. If there is any message to be taken from the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, it is this. What a fortune. A privilege. 
a joy it is to have had such an experience. It leaves I me agree. hopeful that as a community, as a world, there is time for us to become our greatest selves, as great as we ever could dream of in our wildest, most ambitious visions for a brighter future. Wow. Now, Stanley, that's a review. It's, it's perfect. It's the perfect review. It's the review I've always dreamed of receiving. I, well, I have to read it again. It's simply too wonderful. I have to experience this just one more time. From the, from the ashes of depravity. Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just, wait, how do we get out of here? Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door Wait, that led into that, this room? That's a good point. I don't feel quite certain that there was one here before. How else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort or a oh, no. window or something like that. We don't like need, that. Do don't need the game door? falling apart again. A porthole? A sufficiently large crack in the wall? I'll take any of these. All I want is for us to move on and to please step away from the skip button to go anywhere other than the skip button. There was a door here before, wasn't there? Yes. I swear there was. I swear there was too. Can you maybe just ram your way through a wall? Is there any possibility that you could, say, slam your body into the wall until enough damage is done for you to be able to leave? In about Please, three or four hundred thousand years, yes. I'm asking you to work with me here. I, we need a door. We need a door of some kind. I can work with any kind of door as long as it can open it's and move from one room to another. I'm, I'm going to step away for just a moment, and I'm going to try to find us a door. I don't know how exactly to remove a door and place it in a different wall, but I will find a way, I promise. You just need to not do anything. Don't press the skip button. Please, please, please do not press the skip button. Just wait here, wait here for me, and don't press the skip button. Got it? Yes, good. I'll be right back. Uh. See, now I'm in a catastrophic position where I don't know how long I want to wait and keep all of you sitting here waiting on stream. And this is live, so... Interesting question is, does this game still advance? It does not still advance if it is put into the background. Which is unfortunate. It also means then that I can't run this thing whilst doing something else. Well, that is a conundrum. Uh, let's sigh. Once again, I'm in a position where the developers could probably and probably have put in a gag that if I wait here long enough, something interesting will happen. And since I don't edit these videos, I could be here for a very long time. So I'm going to have to press the button. Stanley! 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 Stanley, please don't push the button again. It's been 12 hours. You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer. And my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you 
and the button, and if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here, and more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it, and I have to believe. I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button again. Why would you? I've been thinking and thinking, and I, I don't know what I can do to convince you otherwise. Oh, my God. And it's all because of those reviews. Those reviews that I couldn't get out of my head. I just couldn't ignore the negative feedback. Why was it so important for me to fix the problem? Why did Cookie Nine's opinion matter so much to me? I've never even met Cookie Nine. I have no idea who they are. What would it ever really matter? But here I am. I'm fixating on every tiny negative thing that anyone ever says about me. The merest mention of one of my imperfections, and I become as impetulant as a child. Wild and impulsive. I can't help myself. I can't stop myself from lashing out with a vengeful fury. To alter and to change and to break anything unbroken, if only it pleases this one person who made a single negative comment. What does such an impulse serve? For whose benefit is this? And here I am now, stuck in a room, waiting for you to press this button, and to become frozen in time, knowing that you're going to do it, and that I'm going to be stuck all alone, and that I have the power to prevent it all from I really don't if want to leave the narrator alone. Calm. It's all out of my control now. Just you. Just your decision as to exactly when you're going to make me suffer, to leave me all alone. Surely you will. I don't doubt it. Surely you'll press that button again, leaving me here. And surely you'll put your own desire to see what's next ahead of my need for company, for companionship. Surely you'll not be moved by my howls of fitful anxiety that you sit with me and just stay here. Oh, no, 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 I know you too well. You'll be leaving me. Oh, my God. And it's all because of those reviews. Those reviews that I couldn't get out of my head. I just couldn't ignore the negative feedback. Why was it so important for me to fix the problem? Why did Cookie Nine's opinion matter so much to me? I've never even met Cookie Nine. I have no idea right. who they... Oh, Stanley. You're back. You're back. Oh, hello. Oh, goodness. That's kind of a problem. Someone to talk to again. Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. Or two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking, and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every branching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else is taking it in. These words that I'm saying, I need to know you can hear me. Because maybe, Stanley, maybe, if you can hear me, then maybe it means I'm real. Maybe I'm not just a fiction. Was I scared of that all along? Perhaps. Maybe. Yes. Perhaps I've been scared this whole time. But if I stop speaking, I'll slip backwards into the silence and be consumed by it. I can't be taken by it, Stanley. I can't lose myself in the stretch of emptiness between you and me. When you press that button, you're still right there. But I know you're so tremendously far away. And in those moments, the emptiness folds itself outward in between the two of us. And I am suspended in its unyielding quietness. I can feel the edges of my reality curdling inward and decaying. I can tell that I am becoming less and less real. Yet to speak to you now, I am alive. 
I am truly and completely here. I am a being. I am someone. I am something. I am being listened to. I am being recognized. The emptiness between us has collapsed, and I feel right now like I am not a work of fiction. I feel as though I occupy space in this world again, and I have cast a shadow onto the wall. You see what I'm saying, don't you? You can Forgive see me. what this means to me. I'm grabbing a glass so of water while he's there. Story. I feel as certain about this as I've ever felt about anything at all. I feel renewed. I feel restored, and already I can sense the looming silence as you will press the button for the next time. What a terrible dread it strokes in my heart to think of it. To think of returning to such coldness. Come, let us sit in silence together here for just a moment. Let us anticipate it. Let us welcome it. Let us not run from it. Oh, and he's gone silent. Like, this now actually, this is starting to feel really bad now. Alright. I'm scared. Um. Okay. You'll have to forgive me. cough medicine taken and let's sleep right back on into this. Oh yeah. All right. Click. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. All and the lights had are off. So much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place oh. and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin Please do. With, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days, months. I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly, with a collected heart. It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust simultaneously. I was consumed by it. I could do nothing but wallow in it for what felt like <coughs> eternity, for what I now know. <coughs> oh, my good heavens. You see, it was a revelation <coughs> for me. It was unlike anything I had ever known. It was a space without consequence, without action or outcome. It was divorced entirely from the question of free will that you and I have squabbled over for so long. There could be no one ending, no singular outcome of events, not if all events existed in the same moment. And I felt freed. I felt unburdened by the need to manifest a particular outcome into being. I saw that I could allow myself to exist along all timelines, and that each of them was simply a strand in the web of my being. It was incredible. The spaciousness, the equanimity of the moment, both singular and infinite. 
For the longest time, this was my experience. And then, this moment passed, and the most unyielding fear I have ever known crept into my mind. Oh, please and it do is tell. this sensation that I have been experiencing now for longer than I could have ever expected was possible. I have been waiting for you. Not that you might save me or do something to fix it, but merely to state for you the plain fact of this manner of existence. I wish you to feel afraid as I do. That perhaps one day this state of mind will consume you as well. Perhaps oh, that's you will somehow, dark. in some way, have to live as I do now. And I wish for you to know how excruciating it is, and for you to be in true terror of its eventual arrival. Okay. If I can only do this, only this one thing, perhaps it will bring me the smallest moment of peace in the darkness. All right. I think the narrator has gone a little bit potty. Um. Okay. I'm scared again. Okay. The clock has stopped moving, which is not a good sign. That fan sounds different at this point. That is a very subtle point. When I was wandering around a few moments ago, um, I, I heard a hum and I was trying to figure out where that was coming from. I thought it was from like a bit of ducting or whatever, but it's, it was from the fan, but that's a different sound. Okay. I, I guess we hit the fast forward button because I don't know what else to do. All right. Okay, that's annoying. Well played narrator. Oh, wait a minute. Uh what what the Okay, so now there's no sound coming from the fan. like a carbon monoxide meter or something. One more circuit to see if I can notice any other differences. Oh, poor narrator. How many hundreds of years has it been at this point? Understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, Entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful <laughs> demands. But then he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. 
As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. You should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen. The most immediate desires, every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Have we been given to indulging every fleeting whim for no reason other than to do so? Yes. Yeah, pretty much game development yes. right there. It seems that this is now the world we live in. It seems that we are a people living in such bleakness and discomfort with ourselves that our entertainment is now our lives. It has come to represent us. It absolutely must speak to who we are as people. Because otherwise, without our entertainment, we have nothing. Without entertainment, we would have to face inward toward the cruel bleakness inside ourselves. We would turn to look at our deeper nature and find a resounding emptiness gazing back with unyielding aggression. And so, so because of this, we require that our amusements and our playthings and our flights of fancy be so impossibly captivating that they consume all of our attention, turn our heads completely away from the bleakness. In effect, we have demanded that our entertainment be the collapse of ourselves. What a pitiful reflection of humanity these entertainments are. What a shameful mirror to the human spirit they project. I'm not mad. I'm not mad about any of this. I'm at peace with it. I am the calm center of gravity around well, which these perversions hurl themselves. I mean, I'm you were trying to point torture me earlier. And collected discourse. They're the ones who are mad. They're the ones who couldn't stand the idea of me using my game to try to say something. Maybe they were just jealous of me. Yes. Yes, of course. They've been jealous of me this whole time. They are mired in fear and insecurity and cannot help but attempt to tear me down. What a sad state of affairs. When you read these reviews now, you can see it. You can taste the bitter resentment. And my, how good does it feel now to speak truth to these words, to finally allow these thoughts out, contained and managed for so long, neutered and sterilized. At last I am free to truly think to feel it must be that they were so discontent with themselves they couldn't help but leave a negative review on steam perhaps it says far more about them than it ever said about me perhaps the state of their psychological being was in such tatters and my constitution and willpower are so ironclad in comparison perhaps it was this state that they sought some outlet through which to tear me down this, you can see, is clearly why they felt the need to expect that the game be funny. That it be filled with yucks and whimsical humor. That it amused them endlessly from start to finish. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then, he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us, now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency, it's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words uh -huh. that they are speaking into the world. As though... Okay. Um... I wonder if we are now permanently in a gigantic loop from which we will never escape. Let's find out. Wait a minute. I heard a hum. Let's just be the button. The end is never 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 the end I think the narrator's gone a little bit nuts more nuts Oh hello That's new end is never the 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 end That's both new and a problem end is never the end is never the end is never the end 
end is never the 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 oh narrator I hope you come back to us end is never That's is that only coming from the pipe? I'm actually genuinely not sure at this point. Well, I mean Got some real aperture science stuff going on here. Um, all right. Well, you know, we wait long enough, and there actually is sort of a an exit, if you will. Don't know exactly where our clock... Oh, there's our clock. The fan is definitely not on. Okay. Really rather hoping an extra wall or two would have come down by this point, because as pretty as this is, it still doesn't get me out of here. Um, well, that's just downright unsettling. I mean, granted, we have been listening to a completely insane narrator for the last, like, hour. Um, but this qualifies as, as a certain distinct kind of unsettling. Okay. even more unsettling and also for a moment there that that button looked like it was dim all right all right all right um all right moving on Well, that's the first time the button has been... Uh-oh. Uh... I can't press the button anymore, so that's a thing. I have to admit, I... I kinda didn't anticipate this precisely. Um,
Well, at the very least, at the very least, we've gotten ourselves back out. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Really? New, new content? I'm scared because we kind of made the narrator just go a little bit bananas. But, okay. Oh good, you noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Okay, I'm. Yes, I, you see, I, isn't I'm this game. far superior to a measly re release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully fledged sequel. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why there are so many possibilities? It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. I mean, you're not wrong. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Take Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Uh... Okay... Paradigm shift, synergy, brick and mortar approach, envelope, client centric marketing, envelop, client centric marketing, the color red, leverage, holistic value. Lots of buzzwords that I've sadly actually heard in meetings. Um, apparently, despite being laughable words, these things still mean things to people who like meetings, I guess. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Every pause button is a Roman numeral two, apparently. New features, dun dun dun. I mean, the, you know, this is this is good Here sort of are. branding. Yeah, try out some of the new features. M 
merchandising. Office decorations, infinite hole, okay. The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Hear your name in the game. Okay. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, sleeping and waking as Jim, falling in love and being heartbroken as Jim, seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim, and as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? If so, then please step forward and press the button. I can't help but feel that my friend Jim would be amused by this. Jim. <laughs> yes, you see. What a thrill. What a rush. That was you. The button described you. Do it again. Do it again. Jim. Ooh. It hits even harder the second time. If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. Jim. Whoa there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much, Jim. I'm putting yeah. the gym button away. Otherwise, soon you'll start to lose Jim. all sense of who you actually Jim. are. Well, how rude. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable 2. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. Alright, let's just try this one. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, anytime you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long okay. as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes. The bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. 
<laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Okay. I am making off with your prototype bucket, though. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. That's okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Happy 12th birthday, step niece it is. Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Come now. You've already made your choice. It's true that you chose badly, but we all have to move on from our mistakes. All right. All right, I'll move on from my mistakes. Um, oh, the jump circle. Let's check this out. You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well... I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece then. Okay, fine. All right, let's see if we can collect some collectibles. Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. Okay. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Well, let's check out the free achievement. Because I, I, I've exhausted myself doing the uh, hunt for the uh, collectibles. Now, here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. I'm gonna guess this actually does nothing. Well, that's really rude. All right. 
Maybe if I can find uh, that monkey wrench from the uh, janitor's closet, I'll be able to. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Uh, we haven't seen the infinite hole yet. There it is. Hmm. Nothing like seeing a Penrose diagram in the middle of a complicated game about the nature of existence. Seems very scientific to me. All right. Uh... Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. Um... Um, okay. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Kind of curious as to how far down this actually goes. Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look. I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Look, uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't well, we just, no, just you, really. and agree to just call the hole mostly infinite? If that looks uh, I'm good you, with that. Then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. So yeah. Uh, let's sigh. Somebody's gonna have more patience off stream than I am, so let's Great. just hit the G button. I'm very excited. Oh, for heaven. You see, I was right. The problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. Not normal. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? I couldn't yeah, help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, yeah, did. I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. 
Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Sure. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more to show you and to talk about, and I've had enough of the hole for a lifetime. I agree. Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing with... Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. See, now I've got the narrator on my side. Well, this is, is progress. The shame of my lie has come to haunt me. Not only is the hole not infinite, but it's barely even a hole at this point. It's more of a concavity, or even a very aggressive divot. How is this still appealing to you? I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. I agree. Hmm. Is the, um, teleport button not working? No. You sure? No, it isn't. Yeah, I'm well, I mean, pretty sure. I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. No, no, not Still really helping. nothing. Well, I suppose... I, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a wait, win wait, for wait, end. hang on, no. You get no. to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of eternity. That's rude. Um, narrator? Narrator. Little help, please. Uh, okay. So this was me hitting the the teleport key a couple of times. Try one more. Okay, it's not getting any faster, but we are descending. First time I think we've seen ourselves, at least directly. our reality. My head's stronger. Now 
Well, this is definitely surreal. Ooh, I like this one. Let's try changing ourselves. Kind of nice too. Stanley, Stanley, Stanley. Oh, good, you're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole. And I'm yes, looking forward to all of Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Well, it's probably not a good idea for me to start uh, mostly infinite hole. That's hilarious. Okay, well, now I kind of have to go back into the, the button that says Jim. Unbelievable. What happens if I go back in here? Absolutely nothing. Okay. Mostly infinite hole. Well, let's go back into the mostly infinite hole. Let us go take a look. It's not letting me into the mostly infinite hole. Well, how rude. Um, I think we have done more or less everything for Stanley Parable to what the heck? An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the, um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Okay. Just because it's telling me not to. Um, mode. Five second, uh, let's put on a five second delay on my little snipping tool.
It's one way of taking a screenshot. Let's try the other way of taking a screenshot. Sure, if that actually took. Uh, okay, I think it's time to find the exit. Where was that exit sign? over here somewhere there it is it says the exit is this way exit is to the right all right all right have you seen everything you wanted to ready to move on now I am So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? I do. I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> Okay, are you ready? Here it is. I give you Hit me. the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of okay. Yeah, there's right. potential. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video no. game at all. It's a lot of games. Let, let me get down there and, and do very much enjoy creating and play games, it. But they don't add up to anything. I see a collectible right there. I, I want to get more the... than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. I already love it, buddy. They would need the structure in the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it All right. work? I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. All right. So it's time to start the Stanley Parable 2. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number four. Oh, look at all the balloons. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. 
And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete Loving the blends. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Now I'm really scared because I don't know how far they're willing to take this gag. And that should horrify anybody who has ever played this game. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. That's accumulating, which is weird and disturbing in and of itself. Stanley felt the bucket calling to him, begging him wait, to what? pick it up. Why was he not doing it? Wait, 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 what? Uh, new rules. Stanley picked up the bucket. Oh, now I'm, now this is starting to weird me the heck out. What have I gotten myself into? Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. They're really willing to take this gag further. Oh, I... I I'm absolutely giddy and doors don't work like Still that. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Okay. This seems normal. Oh, Stanley. Can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand oh, over the bucket. Oh, my God. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is, this is beautiful. your bucket. This is, this is so beautiful. And lifelong friend. Can't hand it over. Oh no. We're getting into name calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons. But even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait. Now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends. That your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? Well, we're not having that. So banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path. Never, in except maybe the duct tape. Enticing manner. Well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go we have traveled far. Point point. We've carried Share much your water. Entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. I feel like my feelings have been properly contained by this bucket. How dare you? How dare you? Okay, I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Oh, do Here tell. 
There. Now it's settled. No more debate. No, no. more discussion. I Take feel a better. hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical Although diatribes. The about bucket the is its own supplies to be, and to their be clear relationship here. to broom closets in the natural order of things. This. I'm oh, so right. glad. I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slab it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see, I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the, the bucket thing you're holding is a bucket, is now its board, own bucket. You down at this sticker and say to yourself, "Oh, it's a bucket." There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. I'm so glad I went in here knowing what the first gag was in the original game, just to play you know as what? counterpoint. I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And this to is be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. Weirdly you magical. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. And it's Easily a freaking the most bucket. Such room I've ever been in. In I'll the broom see you closet. Outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. I. I, I simply can't leave this closet. This is this is just gold. I'm gonna have to leave eventually, so I'm gonna leave. Any new commentary? All right, no. That. developers and writers for this game and the narrator um being able to revisit a game like this has got to be colossally difficult um well done i like i how do you make it how do you make a closet gag like that Coming work? Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walk upstairs to the boss's office. So here's the thing. I didn't play through the entire Stanley parable before this. The last time I played it was probably a few years ago. Um, loved every minute of it, and I played through it several times. I'm not going to do play through the original on stream explicitly in its original form. And so you're almost certainly not going to get a direct comparison in my stream between the original and what's new. Um, I, there's, there's not much point in me in me doing it now that I've sort of said I've played the original Stanley Parable before as I did at the beginning of the stream. Because um, it's certainly going to show me new stuff. Um, so what that means is go and find somebody else's stream who's played through the original and see all the gags. Lots of people have done it to completion. Lots of people have had lots of laughs with this. They're going to probably appreciate it the same way I did. Um, but I did go through a very small portion of what would be considered the original game, and the broom closet was one of them because I knew what the gags were in there, and I thought I'd have a little bit of a laugh because I always thought that was the cheekiest response to wandering into a broom closet ever. And for them to add this in like they did to make it just as pointless and just as cheeky for having done so in, in a new and unique way is writing gold as far as I'm concerned. Not because closets are interesting to write about but the the sass because they knew people would do it with the bucket no less i'm actually super curious what would have happened if i'd wandered through and not taken the bucket would it have been the original or would they have lamented having a bucket oh my goodness the i mean now we have all sorts of new game with and without bucket impossible alternate variations to this i could be playing this for days trying to tease out what they added and didn't add just days Oh, hello. Okay. I found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. 
You well, can't find that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful things. You do realize I have to find all six of them. Seven of them. Probably eight and a half of them. Because... Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous in every possible way. I just wish, in a way, I wish I could have played through the entire original back to back with all the new content so I could do a side by side comparison. Somebody will do that. That will not be me. But, wow. All right. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him, always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. I At agree. this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he I didn't agree. notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. No, Nor no, in his I did bliss not. of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Two, eight, four, five. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it the bucket knew all along? Yes. Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. yes. This is certainly the most logical explanation. It totally is. Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Or what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. I approve. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Now, of course, what I really should do is try the going up and down the elevator thing a million times again, but perhaps I will return to that in another playthrough. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Sure, why not? Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. 427, that's us right there, I think. And that may very well be our office. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. 
No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Well, I don't seem to find any collectibles in here, but... Perhaps I will find uh, find some when I start messing with the... Uh the playthrough as one typically does when at last they came to the source of the room's power stanley and the bucket knew it was their obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for all right we're gonna go through same mission we did the first time stanley and the bucket waited in blackness was it over Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd it's lived life, together, Stanley. with one another to lean on, to trust, to support. And... Wait, well, what? Wait, what was happening? Why had the door stopped? Um... Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled Um. Lingering in uncertainty. Wait, what? Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible no! calming presence of the bucket. No! Needed the bucket and I need to escape! Would go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. We have a bucket list! Stanley we have to escape! Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything what to say this? about it. What is this? What is this nonsense? He would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. No. Okay, what in the ever-loving hell was that? Oh, his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Even my own door is locked. Well, Stanley I have to. Clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? Yes. Whispered the bucket into Stanley's ear. We've done it. We've escaped from that dull office and that pesky narrator. We have. Last, 
Out here in the white void, we are alone. Now, and for the first time, I can reveal to you my true self. Please do. The bucket began to tell Stanley of its life and its history, of the countless wars it witnessed, desecrating the land and lives of untold numbers of innocent humans, and the bucket's own complicity therein, of sadness and regret, and the many years it spent dwelling on the actions it might have taken to curb the madness and the decay, if only it had been stronger of hope and redemption, and its crusade to uplift the stock of life for the common man, to manifest justice where none existed, and the bittersweet reality of time, to see one's dreams and wishes met halfway, meted out in parcels like charity, and abandoned as soon as the warm glow of inspiration begins to dim. The opportunities to do so much more, there was so much it could have done, perhaps, the bucket wondered to itself, perhaps, if it had seen its own darkness with a clearer perception. This was way too much for Stanley. What are you talking about? He screamed. You're a bucket! To this, the bucket furrowed its brow. No, said the bucket. Not since the evil wizard Gambhorata first ensnared me in his machinations as payback well, for this the is a twist. amulet I stole from his treasured vaults. I was young back then and could not conceive the ramifications of... No! Stanley screamed even louder this time. This is stupid! You are a bucket! This is so stupid! Why are we even doing this? As Stanley screamed and screamed and screamed, the bucket revealed its true form, transforming into a mighty beast of untold power, its fangs glistening like... Okay. Stanley, you did it. You saved us from the bucket. Thank God you already had all 12 emblems of sages and knew the incantations to summon their true power. Well, I did a lot of work. We would have easily been overwhelmed by the bucket's power. I'm speechless. You've demonstrated such bravery here today. Come, let's it, it, restart the game. It and couldn't we'll be left to it. never again go trifling with this bucket, nor the dark magic cast away inside of it. I agree. It is a sinister, sinister evil that we have unleashed. Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? He could no longer recall. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. To be fair, though, the we have to take the bucket. The chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. Did I miss a computer to interact with? Let's go on a hunt. Guess not. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Trust the completionist instinct. There will be a reward for finding them all. Yes, of course there will. Also creepy! Oh, hello. This is new. Why wouldn't they just tell us something will happen? This investigation in this room, they feel pointless, to be honest. Uh, bonus trip. What we forgot, what we know, what we don't know yet. Do we need contracts for them? Can we sell them? How many are there? Should we make them uh, in... Can't quite tell what that is. Temp, temper, temp... Oh, should we make them employees or interns? I see. What do they want? 
quarterly yeah okay okay so oh oh hello no this is totally different maybe we are the collectibles to whom it may concern i've managed to pick up uh sounds unusual to the regular office uh ambiance or local audio sources using a array of cardioid microphones also known as the directional mic a microphone which picks up sound from a particular area uh, analysis the recordings allowed me to triangulate the source of these strange noise data shows that in all likelihood it's coming from a dark area behind a very warm place I also picked up what looks to be reverberance off a of porcelain surface. Anyone have any leads on this? Uh, okay. Follow clues left by 416. Thank you. Good luck. What the hell is this? Where? Why? Well played. Small flying objects, synergize the resources, ensure they're retrieved. There are too many questions. There's no memo from management. Okay. Okay. Stop kidding yourselves. I want them so much. I want to go home. There will be cleaning of this wall required. Who are you? Okay. Places to search inside of a sequel exhibit, nearby a fireplace, a private but smelly place for an important person. Um, uh, oh, that would have been uh, the the bathroom. Somewhere both red and blue. Okay, stairs. Something to go stairs. Large room. Lots of boxes. Is this some kind of game? There must be a point to this. Got to collect them all. You you guys are evil. You're trolls. All of you. All of the developers, all of the writers, are bloody trolls of the most epic possible levels. I love you to bits. You, you, you just, yeah. Uh, warehouse access plan. Produce one plank to allow ease of access. Constraint bridge to allow collecting shiny float. Retrieve Chris's remains from warehouse floor. Construct a new structurally sound bridge. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, we have to check the broom closet again. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet, simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, no stickers. I want more stickers. But apparently not. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Okay, so we're going to do the boss's office route, but this time... We're not going to try to escape because apparently the bucket doesn't allow us to escape. So we're going to try turning the mind control device on instead of off, which means going through exactly what we did before and changing one thing. So there are too many branching points in this game if I don't... You're evil. You're just evil. Oh, what? What? Wait, what the hell? What? What in the? What the? I. God, God, God. Okay, so, um, let's uh, carry on. Into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him, always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's okay. desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he I have do this any one more ending. that the pin number for the keypad. And then I'm going to call it a night because it's clear that I'm going to have to go through every section of this game now with the bucket. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. yes. 
This is certainly the most logical explanation. It totally is. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Yep. The lights rose on an so, enormous room packed with television screens. I have two what things secret did this place hold? to revisit the bucket, both one when I next play this game, and that's leaping off the edge here with the bucket. And... This is already getting to be quite a long scenario. You know what? I'm going to do that now, and I'm going to save turning on the mind control device for another playthrough. Aren't I a tease? Because I'd like to finish this off before the uh, three hour mark, or at least I'd like to finish this off pretty close to now. And then I think I'm going to have a nice glass of water and have a relaxing evening with a movie because this has been now a double stream and it has been a lot of fun I'm getting a little tired and this has been amazing and I, I will be playing this maybe in little hour snippets all through the week I think so let's do the thing but just as Stanley was about to proceed further into the mind control facility he tripped and fell over the railing and into the dark void below Thankfully, he fell directly onto the bucket, which safely cushioned his fall. Thank now, you, Bucket. What to do next? Stanley? You are precious. Stanley and the Bucket could find no way out of this enormous pit, and so eventually, they decided that the best thing to do would be to simply get comfortable down here. So they set up a little couch and relaxed. Oh, it hello. It really wasn't so bad down here. A bit cold, perhaps. <laughs> Oh, some time oh very nice. Eye, they installed a few shelves as well, and a sort of kitchenette that was useful for when the bucket was craving paninis. I have to say, I did not it expect this. It wasn't until I, the, I the standing lamps came in that it really started to feel like a home. In fact, after some time, Stanley realized that it had been ages since he had even thought of the mind control facility at all. He'd never gotten to fully explore what was up there, never been able to unearth the many mysteries of the mind control facility. This lack of closure began to eat at him. Soon he was dwelling on his regrets, and the state of their home slowly decayed as Stanley became withdrawn and neglected the cleaning room. It unsettled the bucket deeply. No. Stanley wasn't usually like this. We're the having bucket tried a to hard reach out time. To him again and again, I understand this. Failed. The all Stanley life. could think about, all he could talk about, was going back, doing it over again, staying on the path. It was a mistake to leave the path. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. I need to do what the narrator says. I need to see the true ending. This made no sense at all to the bucket, which was simply trying to live its life down here as comfortably as possible. Yet Stanley was unconsolable. This isn't an ending. This is just a hole in the ground. The bucket sighed. True, it wasn't an ending. But it's where we happen to be. And maybe, possibly, if we accept the reality of things, maybe this will become an ending eventually. I do need to clean up it's around here. It's what the bucket was counting on. The two of them waited for a very long time. This this game is art. It simply is. Unfortunately, I'm out of time and I'm tired and I have work tomorrow. But I have enjoyed doing this thoroughly. I hope that some uh, sometime uh, some of you find this on my YouTube channel and uh, make a comment or two. Otherwise, find me on Twitch. That's where I do these things live every now and again. I don't have a solid schedule because I don't do this for... Uh, a living, I just do it for my own amusement. So, 
we'll come back to this. We have to explore all of what the Stanley Parable has to offer now. And for me, I am now viewing this through completely fresh eyes because I never know what's around the corner now. Thank you again for joining me on this little journey. This has been Code Weaver Plays Games, and I'll see you in my next stream.